let's learn how to use mediator behaviors. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jono, and today I'm gonna be showing you how we can use mediated behaviors to cut down on some code. This video is the second part to my CQRS and .NET 5 series. So if you haven't seen the first video, go and check that out. Link in the description below. If you guys wanna jump straight into the code, timestamp here. And as always, all the code will be linked to my GitHub repository. Link in the description below. Let's get into it. So what are mediated behaviors? So essentially, a mediated behavior is a pipeline step. And what I mean by a pipeline? So a pipeline is essentially a series of steps that allows you to do pre-logic and post-logic. So this is probably best explained with the diagram. So as you can see in this diagram here, we have multiple steps in our pipeline, each that can execute pre-logic and post-logic. So now that I've given you the basics, let's jump in the code, I'll show you an example. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio, and let's just go to our controllers. So let's say we have our to-do controller here, and let's say I wanted to add some logging to this to say, okay, this, this thing executed, this thing executed, and how would I do that? Well, first thing I'll do is I would inject my logger. Great. And now I can go just logger.log information get to do by ID executing. And I also want to add it to this one. So I'm gonna to have to change this one. You can imagine, right, if I had a hundred controllers and I wanted to add logging or I wanted to change how I logged something, like now, now let's say, okay, I wanted to log to a database or something like that as well. Like I wanted to do something different that affected every single controller. And I had a really large application that had hundreds of endpoints. So that's gonna take a lot of effort to change. And then you're just changing code in multiple places where you, you really could only change it once if you, if you really wanted to. And this is where the benefit of mediator behaviors comes in. So let me show you how we can do this, but only write it once. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to create a new folder here and we're gonna call it uh, behaviors. And I'm just gonna create a new behavior called a logging behavior. So this class actually needs to implement a special interface called iPipeline behavior. And we're gonna be using mediator and this is a generic. So it's gonna be T request, T response. And we're gonna to have to make this generic as well. So the iPipeline behavior gives us one method. It's called the handle method. And this method takes in the request, a cancellation token and a request delegate to call next. So essentially what this allows us to do is we can do pre-logic, then we can get our response by calling next. So this may execute the request or it can go to the next step in the pipeline. And then we can do post-logic. And then we can return the response. So as you can see, it's really easy to actually implement these behaviors where we can do pre-logic and post-logic for each of our queries and commands. So now that we've actually done the skeleton, let's actually start doing the logging behavior. So what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna be logging that the request is executing. Then we're gonna be starting a timer to say the request is executed or the, the request is finished in however many milliseconds. So let's actually start that. So first, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a logger. Great. So what we're gonna be doing is let's just log to say our request is starting. Great. And let's do the same thing for our post logic. And what I'm gonna be doing is actually starting a timer here. What I can do now is I can just do timer.stop. Of course, our request is finished. We've got our response. And now I can just put in our time here. So I can do uh, timer.elapse milliseconds. So what we've done in these five lines of code is set up the request logging for each of our queries and our commands. And this is going to save us hundreds of lines of code. If we go back to our to-do controller, we don't have to do this every single endpoint. So if our system has hundreds of endpoints, we only have to write these five lines of code once. We don't have to write it every single endpoint. So now that we have this, we can remove that and we can remove that. We're no longer gonna need it. We have one important step left and that is actually adding our behavior to our dependency injection container. So let's go to our startup class. In our startup class, what we're gonna be doing to add our behavior is adding one line of code and it's this here. So we're gonna be services, add transient, type of pipeline behavior and type of logging behavior. So one thing that I really wanna to stress to you guys is that order is very important when registering these pipeline behaviors. So let's say for example, I had three behaviors, say one, two, and three. Logging behavior one would run, then, then behavior two, then behavior three. So if I mix these around, then logging behavior three would run first, then one, then two. So you need, you need to make sure that your order is correct in order for it to run correctly. So now let's actually run the solution and we should see our logging. 
Okay, so our application's running. So let's run our get request. Let's just do ID one. Let's look at our log. Here we go. Queries to get to do by ID plus query has finished in three milliseconds. And then we have our queries starting as well. So there we go. We've got that implemented for our get request. Let's make sure our post request also works without adding any, any extra code. Let's just do test one, two, three. Great, let's execute that. And as you can see, we have our command add to do is starting. Command add to do has finished in two milliseconds. So as you can see, we only had to write that logging behavior once and we didn't have to add any additional lines of code to add it to new commands, new queries. It just works, which is great. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. And again, all the code for this video will be in my GitHub repository, link in the description below. Hope you guys have enjoyed. See ya.